r slash ask reddit what commonly held beliefs are a result of propaganda that wedding rings should cost two months salary and need to contain a diamond and that diamonds are rare they are actually one of the more common gems my sister once said our problems are like diamonds we inflate their value because we don't understand how many they have in africa that your salary wage is private information and should never be shared Corporations started that so they can keep salaries low. The same companies share that information with each other so they can keep wages low. Knowledge is power and who has it has the power. Oh and it's against the law for a company to forbid or punish you for sharing your income information. The very first day on my very first job out of college, I mentioned being reimbursed for my travel expenses. The managing partner immediately called me into his office to chastise me and instructed me to never mention compensation in front of my co-workers again. Unfortunately telling him he was breaking the law, which I found out later he did quite often didn't seem like it would be wise, as I had just moved to a new city for that job. Unfortunately telling him he was breaking the law, which I found out later he did quite often, didn't seem like it would be wise, as I had just moved to a new city for that job. When I worked at Walmart I would just hang flyers with information like that anonymously in the break room. I also put up this store should be unionized, my last day as well. I heard from some people there that caused a lot of ray training events with mostly anti-union videos. A famous example is that the UK Ministry of Food released propaganda attributing RAF pilots ability to gun down German planes at night time to their eating carrots in order to keep the responsible radar technology under wraps. Beta carotene and the carrots, it was said, made your eyesight sharp. You'll still hear that about carrots today, it's unclear if that was the case, as the propaganda could also have been meant to get the British population to eat a lot of locally grown carrots amid war rationing. Fun carrot fact here, carrots used to be purple, the English Dutch selectively bred them to be orange, in celebration of King William of Orange. The purple ones probably had more antioxidants and would have been a lot healthier, edit. A Google search revealed that it was actually Dutch farmers who decided to change carrots. Edit. A word. Open bracket. Bread instead of bread. I've had purple carrots. They're really juicy. Sweeter than normal carrots and dye everything they touch purple. We boiled them with cabbage and cauliflower and you can guess what that meal looked like. They were called witch noses in the supermarket since it was Halloween. Which I thought was pretty cool. 2. Edit. Gonna mention these were either extra juicy carrots or they were cooked when their natural dye started leaking. All for a good laugh but seriously I was speaking hyperbole when I said everything they touch. Pretty sure it wasn't anything but carrot, though. That the McDonald's coffee lawsuit was frivolous. Nope, that was a legitimate lawsuit. The woman asked for medical reimbursement and they refused. So she took it to a higher authority. Judge ruled that MCD was in the wrong and MCD paid out. They then spread propaganda to diminish the lawsuit to make it sound frivolous. Now it's used as a prime example against any lawsuit that seems even remotely frivolous. That all happened in 1994, though initially awarded $2.8M. She only got $600,000. She died in 2004, and her granddaughter said that the whole ordeal really screwed up her life. Her quality of life diminished greatly. The money went to pay for a live and nurse for her last few years. Funny that the case is used as an example of a frivolous lawsuit by the public, and an example of the exact opposite in law school. All you have to do is take one look at the photos of the burns that she suffered that were introduced as evidence to know that it was not a frivolous lawsuit. Edit. Really enjoying being called a retard for not condemning this woman for her own stupidity. You're welcome to disagree with the final settlement. But I stand by the statement that the wound was severe enough to warrant adjudication in court. It's not like she just got her pants wet. A long time ago, the liberals perpetuated the myth that their princes are somehow environmentally friendly. What they don't want you to know is how horrible it is for the environment to make the batteries that go into those things. The car's life begins in a nickel mine in Sudbury, which is so toxic, and has devastated its local environment so badly, that its surface resembles a scarred lunar landscape. The mined nickel is then shipped around the world to China to be turned into nickel foam. 
and then sent to Japan for assembly, and then the finished product is shipped around the world in huge cargo ships which massively pollute the world. Studies have shown that, once you count the incredibly polluting battery, as well as the huge distances the Prius has to be shipped, the Prius is actually worse for the environment than a Hummer. This means the Prius driving liberals are actually encouraging people to do more damage to the environment because of their propaganda. Except, everything above this line in this post was a propaganda. The environmental damage that was inflicted on Sudbury both happened, and was cleaned up, decades before the Prius even existed. This means the Prius wasn't responsible for any of it in the first place. Furthermore, the contribution of shipping to a car's environmental impact is minimal, because while cargo ships do pollute significantly, they are unbelievably efficient on a per unit basis, being able to move goods at an efficiency of 1.000 miles per gallon per ton. At this rate, you can ship a completed Prius from Japan to North America using less than 10 gallons of fuel. In actual fact, the environmental impact of manufacturing a Prius is only slightly greater than that of a normal car. And because the overwhelming majority of any car's environmental impact, hybrid or not, is incurred in operations rather than manufacturing, the Prius makes up for its manufacturing costs very quickly. This means the Prius actually is better for the environment than normal cars. Unfortunately, that propaganda spread so far that, to this day, you'll still find detractors of hybrids and electric cars referring to the environmental impact of producing the batteries. Despite the fact that it was all debunked 11 years ago, TL, Doctor, no, the Prius is not worse for the environment than normal cars. This was thoroughly refuted 11 years ago. Nice switch. What the duck are you doing to me? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Kellogg's made that shit up to sell cereal. Too important to waste it on cornflakes. Worked, now I have like loads of cereal in my cupboard. That Napoleon was very short. He was actually a pretty average sized man for that time. Yep. The difference came from discrepancies between the English and French imperial measurement systems. I've heard a bunch of reasons for the short joke. British propaganda. His humble beginning and low rank. Despite being average height, he used grenadiers as bodyguards. Men who were typically very large and muscular. Making him look small by comparison. This is pretty specific to South Korea, but the fan death thing was first perpetrated when Korea was extremely poor and folks didn't want to pay high electric bills. Parents would tell kids that sleeping with fans on could kill them and some of those kids grew you out to be journalists. One summer a guy died of carbon monoxide poisoning who happened to have his fan turned on when he died. Needless to say reporters started touting the fan as the main cause of death and that misinformation somehow survived until very recently. Many older people actually still believe it to this date. People say fans don't kill people, but look what happened to John Lennon. Korean fan death fascinates me. It's amazing that one. People in mass would think something so provably untrue like that. And that too. It's very culturally specific. To the point where you have to explain to most people what Korean fan death even is. Traditional Chinese medicine faced with extreme poverty in the 1950s. The Chinese Communist Party needed a way to address the healthcare needs of a billion people but without any money or infrastructure. So they published a book composed of folk remedies, spiritualism, and stuff they just plain made up. This new traditional Chinese medicine was said to be thousands of years old and more effective than the expensive chemicals westerners used to treat illness, when really it was Maoist propaganda. And even today we hear about how the Chinese discovered a spiritual remedy thousands of years ago that modern science can't match. This simply isn't true. That a diet rich in fat will cause you to be fat and unhealthy. Newer studies are showing that fat, even the saturated fat, is healthy for you and that sugar and carbs are way more destructive on your body. We need to stop this mode of thinking that this is good, period. This is bad, period. You need a little of everything. It's all about balance people. Currently sugar is the number one cause of diet related health problems in America because we put sugar in everything. This does not mean carbs are bad. We just consume more I I I I too many. They hate us for our freedom. This is one I see regularly here. With they are just jealous because we're the best. Nobody is jealous of Americans freedom. 
At best we think that they have cool parks, a very innovative tech industry and cool buildings and stadiums. Nobody hates them for their guns or their churches. Afghan people have other things to complain about. Late to the party, but the myth of Swiss neutrality. Switzerland's policy of neutrality became their national persona after 1945, to hide their complicity in allowing the Holocaust to happen. Things like refusing border entry to German Jews fleeing the Reich and allowing stolen Jewish property to be saved in Swiss banks, while Switzerland had been neutral in previous conflicts. The idea that this was the Swiss way only started to propagate when people started asking questions about why Switzerland didn't intervene during the Holocaust source. HTTPS colon slash slash www jta org the 16th of november 1994 archive new documents show swiss nazi pact shattering myth of swiss neutrality there are tons of books on this but of course everyone believes that the swiss are neutral so switzerland sent back jewish civilians to die and soldiers mostly allied they interned in camps Keeping soldiers out of the war made some sort of sense until the news came out about horrible conditions including rape and torture inside the camps. American prisoners were subjected to physical and sexual abuse, starvation, freezing, disease-ridden conditions and virtually no hygiene facilities. And the camp was exactly like, if not worse than any POW camp in Germany. It was horrible. HTTPS colon slash slash EN M Wikipedia Org wiki war Willamus internment camp there was a good r slash ask historians post on this I'm trying but having trouble finding. That subway's footlong subs are $5. $7. 10 10 inches just doesn't have the same ring to it. The moon landing was far more important than any other milestone in space in the 1950s and 1960s. First satellite. First man in space. First spacewalk. First orbit of the moon. All Soviet so they must be far less important, right? Exactly. Those are milestones in the history of humanity, not just a single country's achievements. Discounting breakthroughs made by other countries is just plain ignorant. First orbital maneuver. First orbital rendezvous. First space docking. First astronaut to leave LEO. First orbital winged spacecraft. First reusable spacecraft. First untethered spacewalk. All American. Do you think propaganda played those down as well? Or maybe it's just that the lunar landing was extraordinary even for Spasafilgt. The entire food pyramid was a propaganda scheme created by the US government to help with rationing. I thought it was to help prop up grain farming in the US. When I was a kid, I always wanted to eat pizza because it had elements from each of the four food groups, along with the marginalized Greece food group. Milk isn't that big a deal. The majority of the world can't digest dairy productively. I found this out on my own actually. Switched to almond milk for no other reason than I wanted to try it out. After a month of no milk and having a big ass bowl of cereal with whole milk, I felt like I had a ducking rock in my gut for half the day. Yep, yeah, I'm lactose intolerant. I never understood when kids went bonkers over chocolate milk. It was always weird to me. And then when I was in high school, my dad made me drink protein shakes with milk. I always thought it was the powder I hated but then I realized it was the milk. That Apple device is just work. I hear it over and over and over again and it's total bullshit. Ask anybody that supported Macs in any capacity. They aren't magic. They have their problems just like any computer. They are expensive and well-made computers so they have much fewer hardware problems than a shitty $400 Windows laptop but there is still plenty of software bullshit to go around. As for ease of use putting a Windows user in front of a Mac will leave them just as lost as putting a Mac user in front of a Windows computer. Same for iOS and Android. It's all just marketing. But putting a Google user in front of any device makes them competent. Apple has the best marketing department in the business. Gigantic flaw in the iPhone 4 that caused it to lose almost all cellular and data signal when held like a phone. They come out and tell people that it's not a problem with the phone. That they're just holding it wrong. And nothing only a select few companies can get away with shit like that and not have it hurt their bottom line. Marie Antoinette spend money on diamonds and jewels instead of on the people. She refused many expensive things because the country needed the money more. I just find her so sad in general. 
being shipped off to a foreign country as a young teenager to marry a stranger, being constantly berated by her mother in all their correspondence, and generally being hated by just about everyone in France and ultimately executed must have been a very lonely and sad life. Edit. Yes. I understand she was rich and the Austrian Emperor's sister. Still sucks to be a teenager forced into her situation. Also still sucks to be treated horribly in prison and have your children killed. Sheesh. Same. She was insanely young to have any of the responsibilities she ended up having. Her and the king were just too duck and young. Maybe only Canadian readers will get it. But our peacekeeping myth. Pearson. PM of Canada was used as a proxy by the UN to get a deal in the Suez. They knew anything from the US or USSR would be quickly vetoed. We all love our peacekeeping myth, yet, no one can really point to large success without Suez. Sorry Romeo Dorle fans. It's another bit of Canada's morally superior propaganda. Did you guys forget about how you force colonized the north? It basically consisted of a Canadian naval ship showing up at various native villages and saying you, 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 and you, get in the boat then dropping them off in resolute and saying all y'all, get off the boat, don't die, and if you see Russians call us. Met a guy once who was stationed as a Mountie in one of those true northern communities. It was a bit crazy to hear his stories as the sole law enforcement person for thousands of miles. And he had serious issues building trust because literally a generation ago Mounties up there would shoot all the sled dogs so people would no longer be nomadic. And kidnapping people's children to force them to boarding school. The food pyramid. What a load of bullshit this is. It's funny because what do we really need the most of? Vegetables. Seriously. You probably can't overeat them. But what's the most important according to the pyramid? Grains. What are the most abundant crops in the US? Wheat and corn. What are they? Grains. And considering that you can get sugar from corn, it's no wonder that fat is demonized so we can replace it with sugar. 6 to 11 servings of grain a day. 20 years later. Why is everybody so fat these days? Orange juice is part of a balanced breakfast. Seriously after World War II when oranges were no longer needed for the war a group of orange farmers came together and planned a massive marketing campaign to get the American psyche to believe orange juice is a staple of a balanced breakfast. How were oranges needed for the war? Genuinely curious. I've never heard this before. To avoid scurvy on the front lines I'd assume. A lot of the hype around antioxidants, particularly supplements, it's a lot more complicated than eat antioxidants and live longer. There are thousands of compounds that could be considered antioxidants. They are simply compounds that easily donate electrons, preventing oxidative stress in cells, and they all behave differently. Nowadays everything is marketed as having magical antioxidants. HTTPS colon slash slash www hsph harvard edu slash nutrition soro antioxidants edit i typed this on my phone an excuse many of us use and have had to fix a lot of grammar but superfoods are still real right i change my diet every month based on what food is currently the superfood on the most magazines i assume this is the healthiest way one can live that all gmos cause cancer no actually some GMOs allow companies to develop corn that doesn't need to be sprayed with carcinogenic pesticides to resist insect infestation. The problem with GMOs is when companies develop corn that is resistant to the pesticide, not the insect, so that they can spray more carcinogenic pesticide on the corn without killing the corn. That is the problem with certain GMOs, but the organic foods companies want you to think that any GMO is going to make you grow a second head. Your last paragraph is totally false. They make the GMO pesticide resistant so that they can use that pesticide instead of older, harsher pesticides. Not so that they can use more of the pesticide. Without glyphosate resistant GMOs they wouldn't be able to use glyphosate at all. So the point is to be able to use it instead of older pesticides. Not use more glyphosate. A meta-analysis of over a hundred studies found that GMOs reduce pesticide use by 37% and this study included glyphosate resistant GMOs. HTTP, colon slash slash, journals, plus, org plus an article, id equals 10, 1371 slash journal, poem, 0111629.
Another risk of GMOs is that they create a monoculture, like all corn being genetic clones, and something, like a fungus, that catches onto one crop will spread like wildfire to all the others, as is the case with most things. The real danger lies in unscrupulous and unethical business practices by companies with a near monopoly on something we all need to survive. Edit. Thanks for the educational replies. If the teacher is 15 minutes late we get to leave. Spinach doesn't make you stronger like Popeye. But it's full of vitamins and minerals. Which a lot of people don't get enough of. Yes, but not especially higher levels. It has some in. But compared with other veg it's not exceptional. It was however one of the first vegetables tested for mineral content. It was a surprise that it contained iron and became the superfood of its day. When other veggies were found to contain far greater mineral contents the myth was already in place. Dogs can look up. So ridiculous. Have they ever seen a dog? That welfare fraud and abuse are common. Actually less than 10% of transactions. Unregulated or punished. Every state has offices that perform investigations. Catch and punish violators. Perpetrated by common citizens. Corporations are responsible for more than half of fraudulent welfare transactions. Propaganda. Don't you think we should do more to prevent welfare waste and abuse carries the false propaganda for all three of the above statements in one sentence. Socialism equals communism. Also capitalism balanced out with a social safety net universal healthcare equals socialism equals communism. Also, those buffoons who think that implementing socialized healthcare into the US, or at least putting an end to the insanely inflated costs, will immediately turn the country into Venezuela within a year and a half. Almost every negative view I have seen on marijuana and the dangers of it. Marijuana does adversely affect developing brains though. You should not use it during puberty. Also, all my friends who started smoking weed have basically based their whole life around it. They only hang out with the people they smoke with. Their only pastime is smoking weed. Just because marijuana itself has no ill medical effects doesn't mean it doesn't affect people. To that second point, it is possible that is due to the cultural perception around it. If it became more commonplace, it might not develop that kind of cult following. After a long career seeing headache patients every single working day, I strongly suspect that the entire concept of sinus headache came from advertising campaigns in the 60s and 70s for OTC decongestants and antihistamines, like the ones that show throbbing and swollen sinuses. Even reputable websites like WebMD have sections covering it. The concept is so well integrated into our body of common knowledge that hardly anyone even questions it. Another confounding factor is that many of these OTC sinus medications contain vasoconstrictors like pseudoephedrine, and often will relieve migraine headaches. But if someone thinks they have a sinus headache in the general region of their sinuses and a sinus medication relieves it, surely that proves it was a sinus headache? No. I have seen hundreds of patients come into the office because no one can help them with their sinus headaches and the ENT already evaluated them and said their sinuses were completely normal. At least 90% of these patients have some species of migraine. This common misunderstanding among patients and doctors has resulted in tens of thousands prescriptions for a unnecessary antibiotics. The surprising kicker here is the fact that even if the person has a true bacterial sinus infection, there is no good evidence proving the effectiveness of antibiotics. Crazy, right? I have included a couple of links. https colon slash slash www.webd.com allergies antibiotics number one https colon slash slash American Migraine Foundation. Org understanding migraine sinus headaches. I spent about 6 months trying to get to the bottom of my sinus headache. I had had a bad sinus infection that took several months to clear up completely. So when they starting having headaches again I assumed it was from that. Multiples rays and CT scans later no sing of infection but still headaches every day. Finally GP refers me to an end doctor saying they are the headache doctors. Guy spent a couple minutes asking questions looked in my mouth and said how you clench your jaw. Turns out the calcium deposits in my shoulder would cause a lot of pain at night when I would lay on it and I clenched my jaw. Which led to overstraining all the muscles in my face leading to similar pain as the sinus infection that would also make my teeth sore and sensitive. Breakfast foods should be cereal, breads and pastries. 
Being Asian and living in America, I always found this funny. Whenever people are like OMG you're going to eat 4x meal. It's not like it's Y meal time. Like, it's all food dude. Which is why Waffle House is the best restaurant. You can get whatever, whenever and absolutely none of it is healthy. That Cleopatra was hot af. In reality she was probably average and just her mind was hot. But no one really knows. Like at all. There was a lot of propaganda on coins and that's the only decent image we really have of her. On coins she is totally not. But that could just be propaganda. Her being sexy could also be propaganda. Or so I heard. There are busts of her that were made current to her life. She was not unpleasant to look at. A very Greek face as she was Greek. HTTP colon slash slash www time trips company uck pharaoh percent 20 cleopatra htm also i wonder how much of beauty in antiquity was just not having pox scars having good teeth and hair being fit and able we forget there were so many diseases knocking around that just being completely healthy may well have made you stand out drugs I spoke to a former boss about my plans to get into the legal cannabis industry, and his response was judgmental. He clearly looked down upon it, yet I doubt he would have batted an eye if I had said I was going to be an executive for Bacardi, even though alcohol ruins more lives per year than crack cocaine. None of our drug policies have been written by doctors. Nearly all of our understanding about drugs is from the D.A.R.E. program and other official disinformation campaigns. Edit to add, when I was in early high school, one year during career day, one student's mother came in. She was a famous transplant surgeon, and very interesting even to 14 year olds. Inevitably, toward the end some chucklehead in the back called out a question about drugs. All the students laughed, but not the doctor. She wrinkled her nose, and said, just about all that stuff will go right through you, in moderation. Occasional cannabis, even occasional cocaine use, is really unlikely to have any health effects at all unless used regularly. Dot. And the teacher cut her off and nearly pushed her out of the room physically. I started to question the things I thought I knew Ray. Drugs since then. But most people never revise their views. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.